So now we have to come up with where we're going to put this data, uh, how this is all going to play out. We've got our source set up. Our source happens to be, coincidentally, a SQL Server 2008 database table. Now, you know, in the real world, this could be any number of sources. It could be a text file, Excel spreadsheet, DB2. The chances are that it's going to be either a text file or it's going to be some large relational database. I'm using SQL Server as the source because it's the easiest. I don't have a copy of DB2. I don't have a copy of Oracle installed here. So DB2 is the easiest thing that I can use. <laughs> SQL Server is the easiest thing that I can use. And the end result is the same. You're going to see how to do the incremental load. So don't be shying away just because I'm going from SQL Server to SQL Server. We could really be using any input. Uh, if it makes you feel better, I could export this to text file and then load it up. But I'm just trying to focus on the hard part here, which is the incremental load. Okay, when we last left, let's just remember where we were. We had this set of data. We had now two columns that we could work with. We have a status column. Do you remember what I meant? I means insert. So any row with a status of I should be added to the destination, to our data warehouse. Okay. So how about we do this? Let's go build ourselves an integration services package to do just that. To not don't worry right yet about all the hard stuff. Let's just focus on the well, the little bit that we have here. Let's grab ourselves a little data flow task and let's say handle or inserts. And so I I'm keeping this real simple. I'm building the complexity. Okay. So I'm going to get get only where status equal I. And it does not like the equal sign. Status I. don't know why it matters. Why can't I name it whatever I want to? Uh, build a connection manager to my source database, which, again, is a SQL Server. And that was the 2008 database copy. And I don't want to just get the table. I want to write a SQL command to do this. And my SQL command will be just give me every column dot sales order detail header. Was it order detail, order header? Oh, man, I don't even remember which one it was. Uh, let's build the query then. <laughs> the easy way. Um, and we'll add our table sales order something sales order detail I was trying to mix the two and just grab all the columns and you know I can come down here and I can either write my where clause if I want to where status equal I uh, or I could have added a filter it will probably do it for me automatically uh, when we scroll down there you could see it added our filter in. so where status equal I okay Say OK. It's pasted that in here. You want, go for it. Preview uh, as you need. Okay. So we now have our base status query, the status insert here. And where do you want to put it? Hey, you know, let's keep it simple. Let's just go to a SQL server. And we'll make a new table here. We'll call it uh, our... Um, DW sales detail or DW order detail. Okay, so that you know we'd probably use a separate database and all that stuff, but it, you know that that part of it is easy. Just choosing the name of a database is is a trivial matter here. Um, so here is the destination. I'm going to go ahead and wipe away the status column at our destination because that status column is unnecessary in the data warehouse. We do not need it. We simply need the actual facts, the data uh, that we're going to be bringing over. Okay, so that's it. I'm just going to create this table now and set my mappings up and notice that the status column does not map. So right uh, on this side, you could it's not even included. So I say OK and, you know, I 
could run this and sure enough it's going to work and 121,000 some odd rows would have been copied over 121,317 were copied um the problem that i have with this i actually have a couple of issues with this uh, one i can run it again now that may not seem like a problem um, i can continually run it um, look over here what do we call our table um, select all from dw something uh, if your intellisense doesn't remember go to edit intellisense refresh so it was something like DW order detail, maybe. There it was. Pulled it up. Took it a little while. Uh-oh. This is bringing back a lot of rows. Did you see what it did? Hmm. 121,000 times 2, right? Um, let's run it again. What's it going to do? It's going to add another 121,000 rows. And the next time we run this, let's do a count this time. Uh, be a little more efficient. Uh, 363, which is 121 times 3, right? So the problem that I have in this case is we never went back to the source and said, hey, anything that was an I needs to now become an N, which means no change. Does that make sense? You see, we are in our source. We're grabbing only records where the status equals I, and then we're inserting them into the destination. But at no point do we go back to the source and say, okay, thank you. You've been inserted. Now you can go back to being an N, which means we don't need to synchronize you anymore. Okay, so watch this. Um, I'm going to delete this table. So let's just remove all of the rows in the table. And so sure enough, it deleted and there now no rows. And after my inserts, I'm going to go back to this execute SQL task. And I'm going to say, OK, uh, for that connection, update the source. So update sales.sales order detail. And I'll, I'll zoom in here in just a second. Um, set status equal n, where status equal I. Okay? And that way, the next time we run it, it's not going to pick up rows that do not need to be synced. So let's do it. We say OK. We say OK. You go after that. And so it will load up 121,000 rows. Then it will update the source. And let's just see. Loaded up 121,000 at the source. Okay, so... Watch this. Remember how these used to all be I? Now they are all N because of our execute SQL task, right? So we run it one more time. And what's going to happen is no rows have a status of I anymore. So instead of saying 121,000 right here for the number of rows, it's, there's nothing. And we can see right there it stayed the same. Cool, huh? Okay. So you got it. I think you're, I, th I think you're kind of with me here. Now there's another problem with this that I'm kind of glossing over. My SQL Server destination has no indexes. It has no primary keys because I used the little wizard-based thing here to generate it. In the real world, use a real table with real primary keys. Um, okay, so now how do we handle updates? Okay. You think that we just grab a data flow and we say, hey, you're going to be an update. And we kind of do the same thing, right? So we come over here and we say, um, you know, same thing. Give me all the rows in the table, sales dot sales order detail, who have a status of you. You think that works? And then how can we update? Well, if you remember from chapter four, we have this OLEDB command, which, as the name implies, it executes a SQL command for each source row. So we can say, okay, so every row that comes down here needs to be updated. And so we could say, use this connection. And I want to say, update. 
DW order details. That's the destination table. Set. What are the columns over here? Order quantity. Okay, let's see that. Um, set order quantity equal question mark. Where primary key sales order ID equal question mark. And and if you remember from chapters 4 and 5 when we talked about both the OLEDB command and how to do dynamic parameterized queries here, this becomes parameter 0, parameter 1, and parameter 2. Okay, so 0, 1, and 2. So we now need to map those to the source values. So we say that parameter 0, oops, DW order details. Um, I think it's order detail. You see I have the S there. There we go. And so you could see parameter 0 was order quantity sales order ID, sales order detail ID. And so I've mapped them up. For each row, it will execute this statement one time. Okay, very cool. And then I need to put another execute SQL task, right, to say, hey, go back to the table, go to the source, say update sales.sales order Detail set status equal n, where status equal u, right? Is this getting a little bit tedious to you? I mean, how are we going to do a delete? It's the same thing, right? We're going to add. Will it work? Well, let's run it. Let's see. The inserts are going to go pretty quickly. The updates, how many updates did we have? None. Remember, we had set everything to n previously? Let's give it something to do, actually. Um, let's update, let's set a few status, uh, where sales order ID, um, between here and here. So I don't know how many rows that is. 51 rows. So we have now changed the status from N to you for several rows, right? And you know what I actually want to do? I actually want to change, set the order quantity equal um, 99 for each one. And the reason that I want to do that is so that we'll be able to visually see the change. So this is the order quantity for these 51 rows at the destination. And it's going to be that if our synchronization works. Okay, so you could see they're all 99 and they all have a U. So they need to be updated at the destination. And let's run this now. I'm just making sure you understand how this actually works. That's what I'm really doing. You could see 51 rows were copied over a little slow. And it did actually synchronize at the destination. Okay, so they were actually copied over successfully. Okay. This works, but it's there's got to be a better way. I mean, look at what we're doing. If we do this again, now we just we could copy and we could paste and this could become deletes right i mean that's uh, this would now set it to n where the status is equal to d and up here sorry this could become instead of update it's delete okay and so this is our primary key. That's why I did that. I need to change my column mappings. And gosh, I mean, you know, and now you could say, okay, after you, why don't you go? And after you, why don't you go? It looks pretty, right? I mean, the arrows look cool. 
but this is lame because you're reading the source once you're updating the source once reading the source once and updating the source internally here one time uh, or sorry updating the destination my fault and updating the source again then reading the source updating the destination or deleting from the destination and then updating the source again wouldn't it be cool if we could minimize this if we could make this more compact yet really not lose a lot of performance that's what the next video is about